It's not long before it will get up to the $2 mark. So if you're seeking a cheaper alternative, and why wouldn't you be, imagine being able to run your conventional car for $1 per 100 k's. Sounds too good to be true, but an Adelaide electrician has managed just that. Here's Vassal Melandris. Dave and Goliath sort of story. We're already at the peak of oil production and consumption, and it's all downhill from here. And that means it's all uphill for the prices. For months, the price of petrol has dominated national headlines and become the bane of our day-to-day -day lives. And for good reason. No one wants to pay two or even three dollars a litre. $35 million in taxpayers' funds will assist Toyota's setup costs. No price has been set, but even with the aid package, Toyota expects they'll still be more expensive than current Camrys. But while the federal government is waving millions at Toyota to produce a cleaner and cheaper solution, it seems our state government has let a homegrown opportunity go begging. I am embarrassed. I, had, I did have high hopes for South Australia. We do have a, a green image, but... Uh, yeah, we, we, are, we are behind in these sorts of areas. Two years ago, Blackwood electrician and would-be environmentalist Dixon Beatty watched the documentary Who Killed the Electric Car? And something clicked. In 1996, electric cars began to appear on roads all over California. They were quiet and fast, produced no exhaust and ran without gasoline. Ten years later, these futuristic cars were almost entirely gone. The EV1 was intended to solve all our future pollution problems. And who knows, had it been adopted all those years ago by car manufacturers, maybe there'd be less global warming or spiralling petrol prices. This is a tough, tough program. It's a revolutionary program. It pushes the automakers hard. And they don't like it and they push back hard. And as you deliberate today on the fate of this program, I urge you to summon all of your political courage to make the hard choices that you know you need to make on this program because when it comes to protecting the health of the people of California, there are simply no more easy choices to make. From the start I wanted it to be professional and something that's commercially viable. So Dixon went about resurrecting the EV1 from its California grave by converting a conventional car into an electric one. He picked the vehicle did the research, got patents on parts and worked hand in hand with an engineer to produce South Australia's first viable electric car. You must be pretty proud of your achievement. Yeah, I am. I am, but I still want to I still am determined to see them out there. I want to see a lot more cars, uh, electric cars on the road. That's my dream. It was given the tick of approval by the RAA scrutineers at Regency and Hyundai even offered to honour the warranty on remaining parts once Dixon had done the conversion on their GETS model. So you've kept the original gearbox and some of the other parts? Yeah, we've kept uh, all the safety features, uh, we've kept the air conditioning, the power steering, ABS, airbags, yeah, it's, it's most of the original parts are there. I'm pretty tempted to go for a spin. Yeah, well let's go. Okay. Top speed on the electric gets 120 k's an hour. The cost to refuel will make that recharge just one dollar for every 100 kilometres. You'll get at least 120 k's between charging and the lifespan of the lithium battery, 10 years. Dixon, I can't believe how smooth a ride that was. And the best part is to recharge, simply plug it in. For Dixon, there was only one authority left to convince, the state government. But that's where he hit a brick wall. I've approached the government in South Australia numerous times and had uh, all but nothing back from them. And um, yeah, federally we haven't had much uh, response from the government either. So, did that disappoint you? Yeah, it did. But it's it's maybe more determined now. If uh, to do it, I've got to do more myself. So I'm happy to do that. I've, I've my passion's still alive. So now he's turning on the silent ignition and moving his $33,000 device to the Garden State. Is Victoria just willing to embrace this a lot more? Yeah, they, they've welcomed us with open arms, actually. Yeah, the Victorian government's been fantastic so far and we're, we're moving the operation to Victoria. 
I think it's a tragedy that he's gone into state, and in fact it's the second time something like this has happened in a, in a couple of years. We also had an electric car that was being promoted. Um, the South Australian government wouldn't support it, so it went to Western Australia. Greens MLC Mark Parnell says he can't believe the government wouldn't jump at the chance to mass produce clean electric cars, which could harness wind and solar power, especially after the demise of Mitsubishi. I mean, look at it. We've got an empty car factory sitting in the southern suburbs of Adelaide, and here we've got someone with a brilliant idea who can't get support, so they go to Victoria. It really begs the question about how serious this government is about green technology. As the orders start piling up in Melbourne, Dixon has his work cut out. But he says nothing is forever, and it's never too late to bring him back to his home state. Any chance the government could woo you back? Oh, definitely, yeah. We'd, we'd be happy to speak to the government if they want to step forward and talk to us. We're more than happy, yeah. What the state government needs to do is they need to make it clear that this state is open for business, not just for big mining companies, but also for young, smart, green innovators. We need to give them support, and that means financial support, and we need to give them every encouragement to develop and then produce their products here in South Australia. And up next, the royal family's latest scandal, the Prince.